Phoebe Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What is the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. Send forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness, so she will not consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall either be to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law. What say you, Hermia? I would my father looked but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, either prepare to die to disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield. To have her father's love, Demetrius, let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? <laughs> How well, now, my love, why is your cheek so pale? The course of true love never did run smooth. Oh, how to choose love by another's eyes. Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that place, the sharp being in law may not pursue us. If thou livest me, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a leave without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena, whither away? Call you me fair, that fair again I'm saying. Your words I catch, fair Hermia. Arago, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Through Athens gate till we devise to steal. Farewell, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyne, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Is our company here? Answer as I call you, Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready! Name what part I am for and proceed. You and Nick Bottom are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallantly for love. Huh. That's a lesson to you, the mean the true performance of this? If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I flute the bell as lender. Here, Peter Prince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, faith, let not me play a woman. I have a beard coming. You may play in a mask, and you shall speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe, too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. No, no, no. You must play Pyramus and flute you Thisbe. Well, proceed. Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quentin, you, Pyramus's father, myself, this beast's father. Snug the joiner, you the lion's part. I have you the lion's part ready to pray you if it be given me. I am so upset. It is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. I will roar that I'll do any man's heart good to hear me. You may play no part but Pyramus. Masters, here are your parts. I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to call them by tomorrow night and meet me a mile in the palace wood a mile without the town. There will we rehearse. There we will rehearse, most obscenely and courageously. Take pains. Be perfect. Over hill, over dale, over park, over pale, I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon spirit. I serve the fairy queen, so farewell, thou love of spirit. Oh, God, here comes our queen, or not. The king doth keep his revel here tonight. Take heed the queen not come within his sight, for Oberon's passing fell and wrath. 
either. I mistake your shape and make it quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are you not he that frights the maidens of the villagery? And sometime make the drink to bear no barm. Mislead night wanderers laughing at their harm. Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck. We do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speakest all right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. Moonlight proud to tell you. What? Jealous, sober on? <sighs> My gentle pup, come hither. Thou rememberest that time I saw, but thou couldst not. Flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair vestal thrown by the west. Marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. Maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me this flower, the herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid, when like man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb. Put a girl around the earth for forty minutes. Having one this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep, and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she waking looks upon, be on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. Ha! I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. I do not, nor I cannot love thee. And even for that, do I love you the more? I will run from thee and hide me in the brakes, and leave thee in mercy of a wild beast. Grow, he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Ay, there it is. Pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild time flows. There sleeps Titania, sometime in the night. With the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take that some of it. And seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. If you're not my lord, your servant shall be so. <sighs> to thy offices and let me rest. wandering in the wood, and to speak truth, I have forgot our way. Let's rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out of bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. Who is here? Needs of Athens he doth wear. This is he. And here, maiden. When thou wakest, but love forbid, sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So wake when I am gone, for I must now to go away. Oh, oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. But who is here? Lysander? On the ground? Dead or asleep. I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. <sighs> Run through fire, I will for thy sweet sake. Transfer at Helena, nature shows art, and through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. Hermia still loves you, be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes that with her I have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Where was I to this keen mockery born? 
when at your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough. It's not enough, young man, that I did never nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius's eye that you must flout my insufficiency. She sees not Hermia. Hermia sleep thou there, and never mayst thou come lie sand or near. And all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Lysander, what? Removed? Lysander, where are you? Speak, and if you hear, speak of all loves, I swoon almost with fear. <sighs> Here's a marvelous convenient place for our rehearsal. <sighs> there are things in this comedy of pyramids of this be that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. I will tell you that. I believe we must leave the killing out. Not a whit. I have devised to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords. Well, we will have such a prologue. Will the ladies not be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. A lion among ladies is the most dreadful thing. Therefore, another plug will say that he's not a lion. Nay, let him name his name and tell them plainly he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. First, to bring the moonlight into a chamber. What man or other must come in with a lantern and say he comes to present the person of moonshine? And then there is another thing. There, there must be a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe, says the story, did talk through the chink of a wall. One man or other must present wall and let him hold his fingers thus. If that, may, if that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, rehearse your part. Pyramus, you begin. What hempen homespuns have we swagger in here, so near to the cradle of the fairy queen? Speak, Pyramus. Thisbe, stand forth. Thisbe, the flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors, odorous. Odors, savor sweet, so hath thy breath, my dear, says me dear, the hark, a voice, thou but stay here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. <laughs> a stranger pyramus that ever played here. Must I speak now? Aye, Mary must you, for you must understand, he goes to see a noise that he heard and is to come again. Oh, radiant pyramus, most lily white of you, a color like the red rose on triumphant briar, uh, most bristly juvenile and eat most lovely Jew, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire, I'll meet thee pyramus at Ninny's tomb. Ninus is tomb, man, why no, must not speak that yet? That you answer to pyramus. You speak all your parts at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is passed. It is never tire. Oh, as true as truest horse that yet would. Never tire. If I were fair, says me, I were only thine. Mistress, you should have little reason for that. I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep. <laughs> oh no, my spirit. <laughs> my mistress with the monster in love. Crew of patches, roofed with chemicals that worked for bed upon a Canadian stall were met together to rehearse a play intended for the great Theseus's <laughs> nuptial day. The shallow <laughs> thick skin of that barren sword who Pyramus <laughs> presented in their sword forsook his scene and entered in break when I did him at this advantage. Table. 
at Arsenal, I first on his head. When they him spy, his fellows fly. And in that moment, it so came to pass. Titania you wing and straight away love and ass. Oh, that felt better than I could devise. Oh, oh has thou yet let the Athenian die with the love juice as I did busy do? I took him sleeping, that was finished too. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This woman, but not this man. Why rebuke you him that loves you so? For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. But thou hast slain my sin in his sleep, being over shoes and blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. There's no falling her in this fish vein, so here for a while I will remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast the city quiet. Throughout the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens. Look thou fine. I go, I go, look how I go. Flower of the purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, pink an apple of his eye. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and in the youth mistook by me, shall we their fond pageancy, lore but fools these mortals be. <laughs> Why should you think that I should really scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. You do advance your cunnings more and more. These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her an oar? I had no judgment when to her, I swore. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helen, goddess, nymph, perfect divine, oh, let me kiss thy princess of pure white, seal of bliss. Oh, spite, oh, hell, I see you are all bent to set against me for your merriment. Can you not hate me as I know you do, that you must join in souls to mock me too? You are in time, Demetrius, be not so, for you love Hermia. This, you know, I know. Lies, keep thy Hermia, I will not. If ever I loved her, all that love is gone. Lysander, found! But why unkindly didn't thou leave me so? The hate I bear thee made me leave thee so. You speak not as you think, it cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I can perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. I scorn you not, it seems that you have scorned me. Have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face, and made your other love, Demetrius, call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare? Stay gentle, Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. Helen, I love thee. By my life, I do. I say I love thee more than he can If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Lysander, where to attend all this? Do you not jest? And not I, Hermia? Or not you, Lysander? Tis no just that I do hate thee and love Helena. You thief of love, what, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you. Puppet? Why so? Ay, that way goes the game. Are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. Though she be but little, she is fierce. Get you gone, you dwarf. Demetrius, follow if thou darest to try whose right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow now, good thee, cheek by jowl. You, mistress. I will not trust you. This is thy negligence. Believe me, king of shadows, I mistook. Cease these lovers seek a place to fight. Therefore, Robin, overcast the night and lead these tusky rivals so astray, as one come not within another's way. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, make his eyeballs roll with wanton sight, when they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. I will lead them up and down, I am feared and field in town. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now! Here, villain, drawn and ready. Lysander, speak again, thou run away, thou coward. Oh, 
weary night. How long and tedious night. Never so weary. Never so low. It's no further call. No further call. Lysen, on the ground, I fly to your eyes, gentle lover's enemy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of Hermia, thy former lady's eye. Sit thee down upon this flowery bed, while I, thy amiable cheeks do put, and stick musk roses in thy sleek, smooth head, and kiss thy fair light ears, my gentle joy. Where's peas, Blossom? Ready. And mustard seed? Sweet love, what thou desirest to eat? Methinks. I've a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay. Sweet hay. Ha, thou fellow, but I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, fairies, be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, so I dote on thee. Robin, seest thou, sweet sight? For dotage now I do begin to pity. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eye. But pop, take this transformed scalp of her the Athenian swain. When he waketh from the other two, all two Athens back in the pair. Titania, wake you, my sweet dear. Oh, my Oberon, what visions have I seen? I thought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I, sleeping here, was found with these mortals on the ground. Robin, take off this head. When thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes. What's off? What nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here on the ground. This Lysander. This Demetrius, this Helena, I wonder of their being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the rite of May, and here in our intent came with grace of our solemnity. But speak, is today not the day that Hermia should give answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Good morrow, friends. Oh. Pardon, my lord. Lysander, Demetrius, I know you to our rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world? My lord, I cannot truly say how I came here. I came with Hermia hither. I beg the law, the law upon his head. My lord, for Helen told me of their stealth, and I in fury have followed them. For Helen and Fancy followed me, but my good lord, my love for Hermia has melted as the snow. Object and pleasure of my knife is only for Helena. Lovers, you are fortunately met. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple by and by, these lovers shall eternally be knit. Away with us to Athens. We shall hold a feast in great solemnity. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wit of man to say what a dream it was. A man is but an ass if you go about expounding this dream. Methought I was. There's no man to tell what methought I was, and methought I had. Well, man is but a patrol if you would ever think to have what methought I had. Have you sent to Bottom's house? Is he come home yet? He could not be heard of. If he comes not, the play is marred. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. Masters, the Duke is coming from the temple. There are two or three lords and ladies more merry. Oh, sweet bully bottom. Bottom! No, oh, bottom! Almost crazy day! Almost happy hour! Masters, and discourse wonders. But ask me not what. For if I tell you, I am no true Athenian. I will tell you everything right as it fell out. Let's hear it, sweet bottom. Not a word of me now. The Duke hath dined. Meet presently at the palace.
history, Marthesius, that these lovers speak of? Lovers and madmen have such seething brains. The lover, the lunatic, and the poet are of imagination all compact. Here come the lovers, full of joy and mirth. Come now, what revels are at hand? Is there no play? There is, my lord. The battle with the centaur is to be sung by an Athenian eunuch to the harp. Will none of that. The riot of the tipsy bacchanals. That is an old device. The thrice three muses mourning for the deaf learning. Late deceased in beggary. That is some satire, keen and critical, not sorting with the nuptial ceremony. A tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe. Very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical? Tedious and brief? That is hot ice and wondrous strange black snow. And we will hear it. Ah! <laughs> so please, Your Grace, the prologue is addressed. If we offend, it is with our good will that we are not to offend, but show our simple skill. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you will know all that you are like to know. This pillar doth not stand upon points. She hath read her prologue like a cult. Indeed, she hath played on this prologue like a child on a recorder. Who is next? Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wander on till truth make everything plain. In this same interlude it doth befall that I, when snow by name, present a wall. And in such wall as I would have you think had in it a crannied hole or chink through which the lovers Pyramus and Thisbe did whisper often, very secretly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, grim looked night, oh, night with you so black, oh, night whichever art when day is not, oh, night. Oh, night, lack, lack, lack. I fear my Thisbe's promises forgot. Oh, wall, oh, sweet, oh, lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see, a oh, wicked wall, for whom I see no bliss, cursed by thy stone for such deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. <laughs> no, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She has sent her now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see, and I'll fall as I told you. Oh, wall, oh, often hast thou heard my moans. My cherry lips have often kissed thine stone. I see a voice, now will I to thy chink, to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. My love, thou art my love, I think. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. <laughs> I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou meet me at Ninny's tomb straight away? Ninus is too! Tight life, tight death, I come without delay. Thus have I, wall, my part is charged so. Thus wall away doth go. Now, is the wall down between the two neighbors? This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. You ladies whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on the floor may now perchance both quake and tremble when a lion, rough and wildest rage, doth roar. But know that I, Snug the joiner, a lion fell, nor, nor lion, nor, li nor lion, nor fell down. If I should a lion come in strife into the palace, pour pity on my life. 
a very gentle beast and of good conscience. The very best beast that ever I saw, my lord. This lantern doth the horn and moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. He is no crescent, and the horns are hidden within the circumference. <coughs> this lantern doth the horn and moon present. And myself, the man in the moon. This is the greatest error of all the rest. They should have put the man in the lantern. How else, the man in the moon? <laughs> I am wary of this moon. What he would change? Proceed, moon. All I am to tell you is the lantern is the moon, and I, the man in the moon. Here comes this bee. This is old Nanny's too. Nine is it? This is old Ninus's tomb. Roar! Ah! <laughs> well, <laughs> roared, lion. Well run, Fisbee. Well shown, moon. Truly, if the moon shines with a good grace. Well moused, lion. And then came Pyramus. And so the lion vanished. Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. But stay, O oh spite, but mark poor night. I do I see? How can it be? What stained with blood? Come tears confound? What sword and wound? The path of Pyramus. I that left path, where heart doth pop. Yes, I. Thus, thus, thus. Now am I dead? Now am I fled? My soul is in the sky. Tongue loose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now, die, 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 die. How chance, <laughs> how chance moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover? Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak! Quite dumb. Dead, dead, a tomb? Come, trusty sword, come, blade my breast of you. And farewell, friends, thus Thisbe ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. <laughs> uh, but would it please you to see a prologue or hear a bird mass dance between two of our company? No epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. Now, lovers, to bed. The iron hand of midnight hath hold twelve. Tis almost fairy time. Now it is that time of night, the graves all gaping wide, every one let forth his spite, church ways past to glide, and we fairies that do run from the presence of the sun now are frolic. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. So, so good, good night, night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends. And Robin showers for amends.